This video will show you how to properly operate the Oregon 720-120 Automatic Chain Grinder. Before you begin, be sure to read and understand the information provided in the operating manual. Proper personal protective equipment should always be worn during assembly and operation. Prior to using the grinder for the first time, ensure that it has been properly assembled. Please refer to the owner's manual or assembly video for setup instructions. Begin by getting to know the control panel. There are three buttons on the panel, the power button, the emergency stop button, and the right-left swing button, which will pivot the head for right and left cutters. There are also three switches on the panel. The chain pusher switch advances the chain, the grinder motor switch activates the grinding wheel, and the three-in-one switch activates the depth gauge grinding and gullet cleaning function. The cutter counter and the speed setting dial is located above the control panel. The counter tracks the number of cutters remaining by counting down from the programmed value. To program the number of cutters, first count the number of cutters in the loop, then push the red reset button to clear previous entries. Use the three small buttons below the counter screen to set the new value. Adjust the hundreds digit with the left button, the tens digit with the middle button, and the ones digit with the right button. Each push of the button will increase the value by one digit. Always make sure all switches are off and the grinder head is lifted before turning on the main power. Remember that pushing the emergency stop button will stop the machine in the middle of the grinding cycle. The grinding wheel must be shaped to the proper profile before a grinding chain. Pivot the grinding head down, turn on the machine and the grinding motor. Then, using the dressing brick and a light sweeping action, shape the edges of the wheel. Turn off the grinding motor and use the provided template to verify proper radius shape for the specific grinding wheel being used. If any further contouring is needed, turn the motor on again and repeat the dressing of the grinding wheel until the contour is correct. Refer to the owner's manual for special wheel profiles for the 720 grinder. Once the contour is correct, switch the grinding motor off. Before sharpening chain, it's useful to understand cutter terminology. Top plate, cutting corner, side plate, gullet, and depth gauge, sometimes referred to as rakers or drags. Some Oregon chains have a witness mark on the top plate to indicate both the proper grinding angle and end of life for the chain. Oregon cutters are electrostatically plated with a thin layer of chrome on the top plate and side plate for outstanding performance and stay sharp. When chain is dull or damaged, it's vitally important to sharpen all cutters sufficiently and evenly to get back to good chrome. The first step when setting up the grinder is to center the grinding wheel over the vise. This will help to maintain the consistency between the right hand and left hand cutters. First, remove the wheel guard. Then, set the head angle to 70 degrees and the top plate angle to 0 degrees following the instructions previously stated in this video. Bring the head down to 90 degrees perpendicular to the chain vise. Next, clamp a straight edge vertically into the chain vise. Do this off to the side as to avoid interfering with the grinder head articulation. Finally, lower the grinder head down alongside the straight edge and look to see if the straight edge is lined up with the center of the motor shaft. Use the knob in the front of the grinding head to position the shaft in alignment with the straight edge. Place the wheel guard on. Each chain has two unique sharpening angles that are fixed on the machine, the grinder head angle and the top plate cutting angle. Factory recommended cutting angles for Oregon chain can be found in several locations. The grinder manual, the Oregon maintenance and safety manual, the back of the Oregon chain packaging, or online at OregonProducts.com. Grind angles are a key part of chain sharpening, and it is important to understand the setting of these angles to be able to operate the machine. Set the top plate angle. First, loosen the set screw on the upper right side of the grinder. Using the scale below the motor head that is marked from 0 degrees to 35 degrees, adjust the grinding head to the desired position. Retighten the set screw. Once the top plate angle is set, power the machine on and activate the right-left swing button Ensure both sides are set to the same angle. The angles may require fine-tuning. Use a hex wrench to slightly turn the alignment screw on the front panel. Turn left or right as indicated on the machine for your particular adjustment. Turn off the machine. Set the head angle. 
First, loosen the head angle nut located on the back of the grinder head assembly. Then, position the head to the desired angle by using the scale below the motor head, the scale with a 60 degree midpoint. Retighten the knob or nut. It is recommended to use a clean setup chain that is in good condition for initial grinder adjustments. If you foresee grinding a wide range of chain types, you may want to establish a setup chain for each pitch. To begin grinder adjustments, mount the chain onto the vise. Note, if the grinder has stopped mid-cycle, the vise clamp will be closed, which will prevent you from placing the chain. To open it, activate the chain advance. Deactivate when the chain pusher moves along the vise. The clamp should now be open. The chain should be facing the same direction as it would be on the saw. To tension the chain, use the pneumatic tensioner. To adjust the pneumatic tensioner, loosen the handle on the right-hand side, then move the tensioning unit up or down to accommodate loop length. Once the unit is positioned, make sure there is enough stroke length on the air cylinder to easily position the loop of chain on the tensioning wheel. Then tighten the handle to lock it in place. Fine-tune as needed. Use the handle on the left-hand side to release or keep the chain in place when placing and removing the chain. The pitch setting label has an upper and a lower scale. The upper scale is for the standard sequence chain, and the lower scale shows the setting for 3 8 inch standard skip sequence chain. This machine is not designed to sharpen any other skip sequence chain besides a 3 8 inch pitch. To set the chain pitch for a regular sequence chain, loosen the pitch adjustment nut and align it to the preferred pitch setting on the upper scale. Retighten the nut. To set the chain pitch for a 3 8 inch pitch skip sequence chain, press the left plate away from the right plate until it unlocks. Then, move it in the direction of the skip tooth arrow. Press the right plate downward and forward into the skip tooth position. After setting the lever, align the wing nut to 3 8 inch pitch skip tooth chain indication on the label. The rest of the operation is the same, both for regular sequenced and standard skip sequenced chains. To fine-tune, make sure the chain pusher is in full contact with the cutter and switch on the chain advancer to get the chain moving. Be aware that the grinding head will be moving right and left as part of this motion. Confirm the grinding head swing is correct for the left and right hand cutters respectively. If that's not the case, engage the right-left swing button to bring it to the correct position. Pay attention to the location where the chain pusher falls on the chain. Before the chain advance switch is activated, position the push arm directly behind the cutter. Once the advancer is activated, the push arm should fall exactly in the middle of the rivet immediately following the cutter and then move forward to push the cutter. Continue to adjust the pitch adjustment nut until the pusher falls on the right spot. Pivot the motor head down, close to the cutter. Note the grinding wheel is still off. Position the cutter under the wheel. Turn the chain pusher adjustment knob to allow the grind wheel access into the cutter gullet. Next, adjust the grind depth setting by turning the knob located behind the motor head. The wheel should not be set lower than the original cutter gullet. With the depth set, adjust the chain pusher forward to establish contact with the cutter and assess the amount of material to be removed. For setup chains, this should be minimal. Turn on the machine and grind four cutters. Turn off the machine, remove the chain from the vise, and compare top plate lengths of the first and the fourth cutter by bringing the top plates of those cutters next to each other. If they are not equal, adjust their lengths by turning the top plate length adjustment knob using the directions provided on the label. If the left hand cutter is shorter, turn the knob counterclockwise. If the right hand cutter is shorter, turn the knob clockwise. Grind four cutters and compare top plate length again. Repeat the process until the top plates are equal. Before sharpening saw chain, it is best practice to always clean the chain and fully inspect the entire loop. A clean chain makes it easier to assess damage to the cutters and chassis. Additionally, a clean chain will keep grinding wheels in peak performance by reducing buildup of contaminants. Next, inspect the chain loop for the cutter with the most damage. Mark this cutter so it will be easy to locate as will be used to determine the grinder settings. Identify irregular sequences. 
Some chains may have two right-hand or two left-hand cutters next to each other. If there is more than one irregularity, you need to count the number of cutters before each instance and enter that number to the counter. This will stop the machine right before the irregular cutter. Reposition the head and enter the remaining number of cutters in the loop to continue sharpening. Note, if there are multiple irregularities, the machine must be stopped at every instance and started again after repositioning the head. To sharpen the chain loop with one irregular cutter sequence, place the chain in the vise, positioning the left cutter with the irregular sequence in front of the chain pusher. For a standard sequence chain, you can start at the most damaged cutter. If there is no irregularity, enter the correct number of cutters in the counter and position chain in the vise. To set the amount of material to be removed, use the chain pusher adjustment knob to locate it back and forth. If the chain is severely damaged and requires significant grinding, do not remove all the material at once. Instead, make multiple passes, removing no more than 3 millimeters at a time. Then, run it again for a final round with the speed setting on slow. The final step in chain sharpening is to set depth gauges. Setting depth gauges are an important part of regular maintenance. If the cutter has been aggressively sharpened, the depth gauges will need to be set. If there's been no damage to the cutter, the depth gauges should be set every third or fourth sharpening. To adjust depth gauges, temporarily remove the chain from the vise. Next, verify the correct depth gauge setting. Again, these may be in the grinder manual, the Oregon Maintenance and Safety Manual, the back of the Oregon Chain Packaging, or online at OregonProducts.com. If depth gauges require adjustment, the first two depth gauges must be set manually with a depth gauge tool and flat file. Once you have manually set two depth gauges, check to make sure the chain advancer and grinding motor switches are off. With the grinding head in the up position, turn on the power and activate the 3-in-1 feature. Note the location of the two manually set depth gauges. Position the first cutter out of the two in front of the chain pusher. Bring the motor head down. Next, activate the chain advancer switch to position the cutter under the grinding wheel. Note that the grinding head will be going through the motions of sharpening a cutter, cleaning the gullet, and setting the depth gauge on a loop since 3-in-1 switch is on. As the wheel gets in contact with the set depth gauges, use the depth gauge height knob on the back. Adjust the wheel as needed. When all the settings are complete, turn off the chain pusher, reposition the first cutter to be sharpened in front of the pusher, and reset the counter. Check to make sure the 3-in-1 feature, grinder motor, and chain pusher switch are all active. If you don't want to set the depth gauges and clean the gullets, simply deactivate the 3-in-1 feature. The Oregon Automatic Chain Grinder will finish grinding the chain without any assistance. Once all the cutters and the loops are sharpened, the machine will stop automatically. Now, the newly sharpened chain is ready to get back to work.